Hey Clemson family, it's time to talk about the Tigers wide receivers in 2022 and whether or not they can reclaim the title of wide receiver U amid a lot of talent, but also a lot of unknown factors. It's also revenge week here on the podcast as we break down the NC State Wolfpack and the Tigers game coming up in week five. I'm Bill Zimmerman. This is episode seven of the Reign Supreme All Way podcast. We'll also talk toward the end of the show about what to expect at ACC Media Days, which happen later this week. Also about a significant injury on the men's basketball team. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button or that follow button like a lot of other folks are doing. We really appreciate the unexpectedly big audience we're getting with these early episodes. You can find us at ClemsonKickoff.com. You can find us on Twitter at ClemsonKickoff and on Facebook at Reign Supreme All Way. But first, let's get into a quick recap of the Clemson baseball angles from day one of the Major Leagues draft. I'm Daniel Shirley. And it was a big day for Max Wagner, the ACC Player of the Year, was drafted in the second round by the Baltimore Royals. And what a great accomplishment for for Max. After not playing very much last year as a freshman, he stepped into the starting lineup this year and really had a huge year for the Tigers. Yeah, he even had a slow start this year. His numbers weren't great as a freshman, slow start this year. The average was always high, and he finished the season at 369, finished the season with 27 home runs. I think he only had four in that hot start that the Tigers had before the strength of schedule picked up. So certainly making the most of the talent that he had. He did. And, it, you know, we've we've seen great Clemson players in the past, and he had one of the best years we've ever seen from a Clemson baseball player. It was fun to watch his development. Pretty sure he'll be going to join the Orioles. It's hard to turn down second round money and you just wish him best as he moves on with his career. They talk about this is the year for leverage if they want to leave, but you do see some guys stay like Kumar Rocker, who then was drafted again this year for the second time. He signed well below slot and that may not play well for Clemson because one of their key commits, right-handed pitcher Brock Porter out of Michigan, went in the fourth round to the Texas Rangers, the same team that managed to get Rocker to agree to a below slot salary, which may up his salary and encourage him to go pro rather than come to Clemson. Yeah, that could be a hit. On Monday night, a lot of the people were saying, oh, Brock Porter didn't get drafted. He must have told teams he's not going and he's going to stay at Clemson. Now it's kind of a toss up, right? You could get a bigger uh, signing bonus. And it's hard to turn that down. And, and it's hard to blame a young man for turning it down. So we'll see how that plays out. But he looks like he's got good choices ahead of him. Either he goes and, and pitches for the Orioles or he stays with the Tigers and, and starts a career with Clemson and new head coach Eric Backett. You remember back to last year, Clemson commit Bubba Chandler wasn't taken until the third round, but he got a $3 million signing bonus. I believe it was the Pirates because they had several players agree to below slot deals and end up signing as sort of a quartet of prospects. Skipping back up to this year, Mac Anglin, Clemson hurler, went in the seventh round to Kansas City. And so there's another guy you're going to be waiting to see what he decides to do. Yeah, it's going to be an interesting decision for Mac because I know he didn't have maybe the year that, that a lot of people thought he was going to have, but the stuff is there. There's no doubt about that. He's got a really good arm, a uh, really talented young man. So we'll see what he's got ahead of him. But he does have a decision to make. Uh, if you're Clemson and he decides to go, you thank him for the years he was here and, and wish him well. But you kind of hope he comes back. And then you saw a note earlier today about left-handed pitcher Tristan Smith out of Bowling Springs. Yeah, his dad told WSPA out of Spartanburg that he's staying with the Tigers. So that's a huge a huge get or a huge keep, however you want to describe it, for Coach Backich in the program. Tr Tristan's been on campus. He's been enrolled in classes. He's been working out. He was going to have a decision in front of him, but he hasn't been drafted yet through 10 rounds, and it sounds like it's because he's told teams he's going to start his career with the Tigers. Well, we'll see how it plays out. Tigers fans obviously hoping the roster will fill up, and new coach Eric Backich has done a fabulous job early of getting some transfers, getting some commits, a lot of energy around that program, so we'll see how it goes. So let's talk this year about the wide receivers. A lot going on, not even sure who the starters are going to be, but there is a lot of talent, and whoever emerges, you know they're going to have come out of a competition and earn that job. There is some talent. It's There's maybe some unproven talent, and there's some talent that is emerging, right? And you look at uh, Bo Collins and the year he had. I thought he had a really good year last year. Dakari Collins stepped up through the season as the year went along. And then you you have Joseph Ngata, uh, Brandon Spector missed last year. E.J. Williams was banged up last year. 
So there's some guys who expect a lot out of, right? And to keep that wide receiver U moniker going for this program, these guys are really going to have to step up. So really interesting to see how that plays out with this group. There is talent there, but a little bit maybe unproven as opposed to what we've seen in years past. Right. But you did see that sort of progress. If you think back to the freshman year for T. Higgins, the freshman year for Justin Ross, how they both emerged by the end of the year and the, and the talent level, but also the capability were really clear by the end of the year. And I think we've seen some of that from each of those top four guys, both Collins, Takari Collins, by the way, they are unrelated from opposite coasts of the country. EJ Williams and Joseph Ngata all have shown what they're fully capable of when they're healthy and when they're coached up and ready to go. Yeah, and health is a big part of this group, right, Bill? I mean, we've seen it. Joe's been hurt a lot. EJ Williams was hurt a lot last year after a really good freshman year. We know about Will Taylor uh, and the ACL tear he suffered last year. And then Brandon Spector was out because of COVID issues of, for last year. So if they can stay healthy, I do believe there is talent enough there to give this offensive lift. And, and we saw last year how much the injuries played a part in the offensive struggles. And look who started at wide receiver in the bowl game and the South Carolina game and guys you weren't even expecting to be on the field and they were getting a lot of playing time. So hopefully this group can stay healthy. Hearing great things out of Joseph Ngata uh, in the spring and, and so far through the summer workouts. So we'll see if that continues. They need him to be the guy they thought he was going to be when he came on campus. And this is the year he will get that chance maybe to hopefully uh, step up and, and be the leader of this group. Gata may have had the best high school film out of all these guys that we're mentioning. And we, again, we've seen it at times when he's been out there, you know what he's able to do, but you also see him just limping off the field or, or kind of clutched over. He had that oblique injury one year. It's just been a variety of mishaps for him. So EJ Williams is another guy who, boy, just has a ton of ability. Tom potentially has made big plays in big games and might be sort of the forgotten factor here because he missed so much time last year. Yeah, I was I was really looking for him to have a big year last year. I, I thought that you mentioned T. Higgins and, and Justin Ross and those kinds of guys. I thought that E.J. Williams had a chance to not be those guys as a soft, you know, sophomore, but really kind of continue that kind of trajectory. And he just could not get healthy the entire season. And that really slowed his production uh, for last year. So hopefully he can stay healthy. And then some of these freshmen can step up as well with Adam Randall and Antonio Williams. Stilato's a redshirt freshman. I think those guys are going to be key as well for depth. You know, you might need all eight of these guys that we've talked about. Troy Stolato also had the injury bug last year, and you wonder when Adam Randall is going to be able to contribute with that ACL that he tore during the spring. You could see him on the field during the spring game, and boy, the size, even from that high up sideline camera, the size is really there. Hopefully the rest of the core is healthy enough and productive enough that he won't have to push himself too fast too soon. Bill, we heard good things about him during the spring. I mean, just the reports from the writers who cover the team where he was – just dominant in practice. And so we'll see if he's able to then get back on the field and help this team this year. Davis Sweeney certainly sounded like this during the spring that he thought he would be back on the field at some point this year. So that could be a really huge lift for this team during the regular season. And I'll tell you this, Bill, I think a big part of this is who is the slot. Because this offense is much more efficient when it has a true slot receiver. They didn't have that last year with Will Taylor getting hurt and Specter being out. If those two guys can get in the slot and really take control of that position, that can be huge for this offense. Let me ask you, when it comes to slot, you know, Taylor and Specter, obviously two choices. Antonio Williams has also been talked about as a, a possibility for that yeah. role, but a late enrolling freshman or on time enrolling freshman, I guess you should say. What are the chances that these three guys, each of them fairly limited in experience, even though Spectre has been around the program a while, can kind of get in there and make a quick impact, especially with maybe three games where they can sort of take their time and figure it out? I think that's I think that's exactly what could happen. I really do. Will Taylor was back with the baseball team. He looks healthy. From all indications, Specter is healthy. And then Williams is a talented guy. Antonio Williams, that is. And we were talking about EJ earlier. So we've got a couple of Williams here in the in the wide receiver group. But I think Antonio can come in, especially in that slot. I think you can have an impact as a true freshman. 
So even if you weren't here for the spring, so we'll see if that's the case for Antonio. Well, don't want to sound like we're making excuses. These guys definitely have to do what it takes to be in good shape, to be able to contribute, to maybe fight through some of the dings and, and nicks that they have to deal with over the course of a football season. And it's going to be interesting to see how this receiver core uh, not only handles running better routes, not only handles uh, fewer drops, but also contributes in the blocking game as well, where there was a lot of criticism last year. Uh, even EJ Manuel the other day still mentioning that on a podcast with Eric McLean and Kelly Gramlich earlier this week. How many times did we see Clemson try to run the wide receiver screen last year and the block the wide receivers weren't blocking and it didn't work and it got blown up and it happened a lot in the game that we're the team that we're going to talk about next, the NC State game. Clemson really struggled with the wide receiver screen in that NC State game and that impacted how that game turned out. The sky is the limit. This can be wide receiver U again, but Coach Tyler Grisham under pressure to make sure that the results are there this year and not just the potential. Yeah, 100%. They, that's 100% true. They, they've got to get production out of these receivers. And like you said, it's the deep ball. It's running better patterns. It's it's blocking. Everything has to be better for these wide receivers for this year, for this offense to take the next step. Well, you alluded to NC State, and let's move on to previewing the game against the Wolfpack. Like you said, a revenge game. Clemson lost last year's game in overtime, and honestly, that game was there for the taking. The Tigers played really poorly on offense. The passing game just has to get better in all facets in order for the Tigers to outscore the Wolfpack offense this year. The Wolfpack are still led by Devin Leary, quarterback who had some NFL options, decided to come back when he was assessed by Pro Football Focus as a third to fifth round pick. And he figures to go ahead and take some shots at Clemson's new starters in the defensive backfield right out of the gate, you have to believe. You would think so. He's a really good player. He threw for 3,400 yards last year. They've got some talent around him at wide receiver. They're going to have to look for some help at running back. That's probably their least experienced position on the team. But it all starts with Devin Leary, and that's a good place to start if you're a, an offense. They, he's a really talented guy, knows the offense well, and he's going to be a tough out for sure when, when the Wolfpack play in Death Valley. Clemson fans can hold out hope that Leary won't have as much time to operate this year. He lost one of his key blockers in front of him. Left tackle Icky Ikwanyu went number six overall, first round pick to Carolina in the NFL draft. Clemson, on the other hand, not only returns its entire front four starters, but the two deep. So we'll see what kind of pressure Clemson can manage to put on Leary and perhaps force some bad decisions or just some missed opportunities. And again, they, they've got to find him some help in the running game. 92% uh, you know, of their yardage is gone from last year on the ground. So are they going to be a one a, a one trick pony on offense? If Clemson can turn you into a one dimensional offense, maybe they get after him. And if you don't have to worry about the running game and you can just let these guys loose on Devin Leary, that could be a key in this game. So we'll see where NC State goes in the running game early in the year and see if they can do that against Clemson because not, I don't think many teams are going to be able to run the ball in this Clemson defense. So that, that could be a huge part of this game coming up this season. Yep. And Leary also loses his top receiver last year in Emeka Amizi, who also has departed. So the efficiency is going to be in question. Last year, Leary drew a lot of praise for having 35 touchdown passes against just five interceptions all last season. Uh, terrifically efficient. So you might not be able to force Leary into turnovers, but hopefully enough mistakes or, like I said, just missed reads. You know, something was there, but he didn't have time to spot it or execute it and eventually force the Wolfpack to punt the ball away. You know, same thing on the defense with NC State. You, you, meant, you used the word efficient. I love that. That's You don't really talk about defenses very much being efficient, but NC State's defense is efficient. And Drake Thomas obviously leads the way, led the team with tackles last year, uh, led them in tackles for loss, led them in sacks, led them in interceptions. So it, it's hard to believe one player led a team – in all four of those stats, but he did that, and he's back for this season. He's a huge player. You're going to have to try to keep away from DJ Uyunglele, keep him away from the running backs, and uh, if you can't control him, maybe you can move the ball on this defense. 
Wolfpack ran a true 3-3-5 last year. I think you see a lot of that around college football in general, even if it's not necessarily uh, considered that. They lose Daniel Joseph up front on the defensive line. They lose Chris Ingram in the backfield, but most everybody else is back. So the defense should be prepared for this game. A lot of experience on the field. Clemson and that supposedly revamped playbook under new offensive coordinator Brandon Streeter, hopefully playing to new wrinkles in what Dabo calls the Clemson offense and hopefully execute better than they did last year, regardless of what playbook they run. And if you look back at a couple of years ago with the offense, as opposed to what we've saw last year, you don't see as many of the wrinkles as 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 we had seen in previous years. So I'm, I'm hoping that they get back to that a little bit. A few more end of rounds, a few more wide receiver runs. I'd love to see them get those plays back in the playbook a little bit more. Misdirection, those kind of things to kind of mess with the defender's eyes. I think that could be a big part of this game if they could do that throughout the season. Well, this could be Clemson's toughest game of the year. I would uh, venture to say that it was probably Clemson's worst offensive performance of last season, or maybe it just you know was a poor performance, but at really the wrong time, and maybe that magnified that impression that I had of it a little bit. So we'll see if they can gain a little redemption in this game as far as the Tigers' offense goes. The defense, I would think, can execute on the level that it did last year. They sure did their share. So we'll see how it goes. And this may be something that comes up during ACC media days, which are taking place this week. How much is that Clemson offense going to change? But I think one of the big topics that's going to be out there, obviously, is realignment. And I think one of the key phrases you'll hear multiple times from head coach Dabo Sweeney is that there are people a lot smarter than him who will figure those things out, and he'll just show up when and where they tell him to have the Tigers ready to play. Right, and I hope that the players – don't have to answer a barrage of those questions because these players have no say in any of that stuff. I hope that we can talk to the players about this season. I'm really looking forward to getting to this season and maybe stop some of the realignment talk, at least for a little while. We know it's not going away. We know these changes aren't going to end anytime soon, but these players can't, they don't have any impact on that. They can't, they can't make those decisions. They can't, have an effect on those decisions. So let's talk with them about the season. Let's hope that's the focus this week. What do you think they will be able to address? Do you think there will be a lot of questions about the new coordinators? Do you think they'll be asked to talk a good bit about NIL, which obviously is in their hands, on the field, X's and O's? What do you think it'll be? I do believe it'll be a lot of the NIL, that, that those questions are going to continue, especially with DJ being there. And and he's had a, pl- a big part in the NIL for Clemson. I would imagine most of the questions for KJ Henry, Jordan McFadden, and DJ Uyunglele this week in Charlotte will be about the new coordinators and how how are things different and what have you seen change wise in in the schemes and those kinds of things. So that will be a big part of these questions that these young men have to answer this week. We will keep you posted as the 20th and 21st. So in our next podcast, we'll be able to address some of it, and in the following one, we will put a bow on it. One last piece of news on the Clemson campus to discuss, and unfortunately, it's going back to that injury bug, and we're talking about basketball and star P.J. Hall, who apparently, having recovered from a foot injury, now has suffered an off-season knee injury. Terrible news for P.J. The university confirmed it. Uh, He did have a knee injury. Surgery is to come, it sounds like. No timeline for a return. I guess they've got to get in there and, and do the surgery if they go the route, surgery route and see exactly what is going on. There couldn't be worse news for Clemson's basketball program this season because P.J. is the focal point. He's obviously the star of the team. The offense runs through him. Uh, they are going to have to have a lot of guys step up and help this team. It's not one guy on this roster anyway is not going to be able to do all the things that P.J. Hall did. So – you're going to have to have Ian Shefflin step up and Ben Middlebrook step up. Hunter Tyson will have to play even better than he's played through his career uh, with the Tigers. And then the freshmen are going to have to be really impactful. And that's the Chaunceys. Chauncey Gibson, Chauncey Wiggins, R.J. Godfrey, and Dylan Hunter are going to have to play well as well. So those four freshmen are going to have to have even a bigger impact than maybe we thought going into this season. And then the two point guards, at least who it looks like will be the point guards, Josh Beadle, Chase Hunter, and then a little bit of Brevin Galloway, they are going to have to play really well also. So 
this is going to be have to be a team deal to cover for all the things that he was not going to be there to give you, at least early in practice in October and in however long this takes for P.J. to be healthy and ready throughout this season. Well, and then it may force a little midseason adjustment if he's not able to return right in time for the start of the season. You hope they've gotten a little bit of experience together, this bunch of guys, already, but they're not going to have that full offseason to sort of gel understand how each other work. And so you hope if that does force a little bit of change of pace with them that they have it figured out in time for the ACC tournament. It's going to be a season that we're not sure what the season's going to be, I think, until we know how PJ is and what do they find in the surgery? What's the timeline? We've seen three to four months. I've also seen seven months. And if you're talking seven months, Bill, that's the season. I mean, that could really impact this team if it's three to four months and he's back in november okay well then it's just how is his recovery doing how is his health how is his stamina those things that's the best case scenario from what we've heard about this injury we'll see where we go from there but this is a huge deal for the clemson basketball program well we will keep you posted as we hear more clemson family we will like we said also keep you posted on media days and the final day of the mlb draft So lots of things to keep an eye on in the coming episodes here on the Reign Supreme All-Way podcast. Also in the next episode, we will get into Clemson's tight ends. We'll also preview the Tigers' Week 6 opponent, and that'll be Boston College, which never seems to be quite as easy a game as it is on paper, is it? No, it's not. Boston College is going to play hard, and they're going to fight. We see that pretty much every year when the Tigers play them. All right. Well, I hope everyone has enjoyed this episode and we are glad you found us, Clemson family. Go ahead. Like I said, smash that subscribe button or that follow button. It's free and that way you don't miss out. Anytime we post, you may want to have that reaction to the big news and find out how it fits in around Clemson athletics and we'll be there with it. Hopefully you can give us a like or a rating while you're at it. We'd appreciate that. Our homepage has some great resources. Check that out, clemsonkickoff.com. We've got a lot of important links there. You can also follow us on Twitter at Clemson Kickoff. That's linked from our homepage. We'll retweet things. We'll give quick hit opinions in real time in between episodes. We're also on Facebook at Reign Supreme All Way. So until next time, I'm Bill Zimmerman. I'm Daniel Shirley. Go Tigers.